at cost would be half a million dollars to build a, a fucking incredible newsletter to now media brand company. Like they are hands That's off. not that much. I know. That's pretty that's what good. I'm saying. Yeah, that's pretty good. I wanted to get five million. I don't know. Round up. <laughs> Welcome to the Smart Nonsense Podcast, where we talk about entrepreneurship, self-development, and challenging norms. Look at this. Belky's in the hallway. Look at this. Drinking. Subscribe on YouTube. Go watch. I got, I got like four liters of water right here. Fresh Mountain Valley uh, spring water. See, that didn't look... I guess it looks bigger now that I get some perspective next to your face. But originally, it looked like you're just showing a water bottle, and you're like, look at this. Look at this. Come subscribe on YouTube to know what it is. And it's just fucking... A normal ass. I paid four dollars for that. Hey, that's uh, it's not much left over after that, huh? Hey, pop, same day. I didn't change. You changed. What's going on? I didn't change. You don't pay attention to me. <laughs> oh, you were blown out this morning. Watch this on YouTube. <laughs> <laughs> I was just a ghost. Uh, yeah. Actually, hey, can you see? Uh, let me let me know if you can see the outside. Yeah, you see the outside. Barely, that's what I get pop. To look at. Barely. You don't see that either. I see the lake. How pretty that is. Yeah, yeah. Hey, I'm coming back. Hey, why are we doing this twice? Why What's are we here? here? <laughs> I ask you because I called the fucking <laughs> pod. Here's what we want to do. All right, there are a lot of behind the scenes that y'all don't get to see. It's where Henry and I, we just cook up these crazy big ideas, stumble way too deep, and uh, this is one of them. We had this dude, Alex Lieberman. He started Morning Brew back in college, like seven years ago i guess now and uh and he and this other guy austin reef they grew the fuck out of it it's a newsletter just giving daily business news now more than that and uh they sold a majority stake to business insider for a valuation of 75 million so just a little back of the envelope math it's like okay majority that means over 50 percent let's call it 40 million dollars dumped into the bank account for uh for morning brew now we had done i think i don't know why we did this it's probably just because they're popular creators but we created a clip for alex lieberman we did it for he trump was like, remember because people are subscribed uh, that was so they, okay. they would remember that's an oops right. on your part yeah. oops the subscribers alex, i'm sorry, I'm sorry. Remember. <laughs> i apologize but that's the beauty, right? We, we created it for Trung. And funny enough, someone just tagged us today and like, oh, a bunch of smart nonsense nuggets in this uh, not investment advice podcast, which is Trung's podcast, or he's one of the, the guests and, uh, or hosts. And it's like people are tagging us thinking we're already involved with them. And then Morning Brew, uh, Alex Lieberman sees us, asks, yo, let me get this shit. We give him a wonderful, uh, actually gave him two overnight edits, blew his mind. And he jokingly, this is his mistake, he jokingly said, my co-founder said we should aqua hire you. Oops. 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 You made a mistake, Alex Lieberman. You cannot aqua hire us. I, I mean, you can. You probably can for, for a sum less oh, than the contract wait, we're about Pop, to propose. On American Express, the credit card. I just found out, so I got hit with a $4,000 mechanic charge. I can make a plan to pay that off in 12-month installments for a 12% APR. No, well, there is interest. 12, that's pretty good. I'm going to do it. I the bet credit you card, are. <laughs> the credit card would be like 20%. That's, that's cool. So it's even better. Hey, look I got at you. one I'm more glad, thing I'm to add. I'm glad I got that referral bonus. I got one bonus. more thing. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to bring down your credit. I got- <laughs> <laughs> They're like, everyone Dylan recommends has the worst fucking credit. It blows up this, this. So Austin Reef needs to watch out, okay? Uh, I was watching well, them. Too. No. Oh, first for, Austin for Reef. I was yeah, watching them this, yeah. on Kai Kawasaki, How- Guy Raz's. <laughs> Guy Raz's. You texted um, me before this. You're like, Dylan, I don't know if I got the tea for this episode. I got <laughs> like, the tea. Guy Raz's show. What, what show does he do? 
How I built this. How I built this resilience edition or something. First of all, guy, fix your video. We're gonna play it here. It's one frame per second. Second off, Austin, watch out. I can read body language. I know he was uncomfortable. He was blinking a lot and hard swallowing. Just putting that out there, we see right through everybody. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> and just... <laughs> no, no, he wasn't blocking, but I mean, no, blinking no, no. a lot a is a form a of Angus, blocking. Angus, Angus you watch uh, out on too. On recent call, he was doing this for a while. I'm like, what you protecting, Angus? Let Actually, me get you know, the first thing, the first minute Angus had to speak to us, he was like, yeah, he's like, block. these fucking clowns, I gotta talk to them. <laughs> we I'm know psychology. Uh, God, okay, so what are we doing? Uh, oh, did you want to talk about something? You were like, he was blinking a lot in frame rates. That's all I heard from your house. Yeah, watch this. out. I can read your body language. So we're going to get uh, on a call with you at some point, and I'm going to read your body language. That goes for everybody. <laughs> if you don't know what I'm talking about, read Joe watch Navarro's out. What Everybody Is Saying. It will change your life. It does. You can't unsee it. Uh, here's the thing. I actually noticed myself doing it this morning. I noticed myself like touching my, my like heart area. I'm like, oh, what am I nervous about? Uh, so that I sent to you, what was cool in it is like, okay, they started as a newsletter and that was just free for all Michigan students. Then they evolved into a newsletter business because they started selling ads and other sort of merch and stuff like that. And now they're in this 2022 stage where they want to evolve into a media brand. What does that mean? Media brand means they want to explore different, what they said, context. They want to explore different mediums, as in, let's just branch out from written to video, audio, some other mediums that exist in the, the 4D multiverse. Whatever there are, they want to crush it. And another thing too is like niche is the most important thing going forward. So they basically want to control the whole business tech news ecosystem, which we're like, okay, we do that. That's what we know. That's our ecosystem. So we're trying to figure out actively, this is more so, uh, this wasn't meant to be a podcast. This was meant to be a business call because he's awaiting our response. We're like, yo, Alex, we got a big idea for you. And he's like, I like big ideas. What is it? <laughs> We don't have that big idea yet. That's no, why we we're don't. trying to figure it out. <laughs> so we we had a bit of a, a research sesh for the last hour. We're like, what the fuck is Morning Brew? Like, I see this dude. I see Morning Brew. But I don't really know what's going on. So, Belky, let, let me know from your research, what have you uncovered so far? <laughs> I, I didn't oh, get the didn't prompt. Do research. I didn't get the prompt. <laughs> <laughs> you didn't get the agenda no, for the pod. The, well, the problem is we usually do pod pod, but I texted you some findings. One really interesting one from when they got in the game is they were they were saying the things we say all the time, which is like content, two things. Content may be the same. He was talking about his boring uncle telling him a story and his similarly aged fun cousin telling him the same story. Content's exactly the same. Delivery right. couldn't be more different. He's really engaged with his cousin. He wants his uncle to shut up. So it's like, okay, that's interesting. We battle that all the time. This like, this, what do we call it? Uh, attention discrimination, which is like, you can have long form content. You can have short form content, how you deliver it. It's all in the delivery. So that's interesting. The second one he talked about is he's seen a lot of people come into and out of the space. He knows media is hard and he tells people all the time, like, it's about consistency over the long run. It's a marathon, it's not a sprint. So many of the people we work with are trying to sprint, 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 sprint. And there's a huge right. philosophical overlap with us there, which is like, we're gonna be doing this for five years or 10 years. Let's build up a sustainable machine to get it done. That's nice, I like that selling point. I think that's, that's our biggest issue we kind of get that from, say, Sam with The Hustle, uh, Sam Parr. They do a very similar thing. They're daily business news, and they expanded, and it's all tech. And it's basically they're, they're the biggest competitors. And that was Sam's thing. It's like, hey, whatever you do, just don't work with Morning Brew if you're working with us. I'm like, well, guess what? We're not working with you. That's the only kind thing of our, we'll do. Kind of our. But uh, the, the point is they would say all these things about, yeah, it's the long game, and it takes a while to grow. But once you grow, it's exponential. It's like 
Dude, you're just looking for these little growth hacks just to like spike this month. And then it's just spike after spike. It sounds like some Fugazi. Uh, well, think about it. Bubble shit. Sam, Sam started the business. Sam's goal was like, how do I make $10 million by age 30? Mm-hmm. That was literally his goal. It wasn't start the best media company of all time. He was like, what's the means to an end? It's email newsletter. Okay, I'll do that. And then he grew it from there and he sold pretty quick. He achieved what he wanted, but he's in it for completely well, different reasons. That's what's interesting. It sounds like the business insider, why didn't they buy all of Morning Brew? Probably because Alex Lieberman and Austin Reef, they, they actually enjoy it. Like they want to still have skin in the game and they see the potential. They wanted to take some chips off the table and be like, okay, now we're millionaires. We cashed out. We don't have to make decisions based off of financial insecurity. Let's just figure out how to grow the biggest media company. As I'm here talking about American Express's make a plan option. Hey, wait, wait till we talk about how much we're going to pitch them. But okay, so those takeaways are great. I love consistency along with what you said with like you can have the, the uncle telling the story, which is boring as shit. Or you have the Gen Z like us coming in and our podcast I, I can't watch other podcasts. Not like I'm not trying to toot our own horn, but we're just like, the dynamic is just different. It feels like, oh, this is more fun versus like you watch something on MSNBC and it's like the stock prices are up this month. No, no the fucking stocks are up. It's going crazy. Like uh, I'm about to buy HODL. I don't know. Just use like terms and shit that people like. Um, that spoke to us in the sense that, okay, Morning Brew. I think the name will have to change if we really want to be the next New York Times. Uh, I say we. Look at that. Um, <laughs> but and I think it should change to clipped. <laughs> right. And we're gonna buy you. We ain't gonna, we're gonna have to do installment you. plans though. <laughs> uh, Y'all got a can charge I buy card? you on an Amex? <laughs> no limit. But There's no my credit, credit limit. limits like 50k. I think uh, I don't know how much you guys are worth these days. But uh, point being, I look at New York Times. And I'm like, okay, let me just look at oh, their TikTok, see what they're doing. We got extras in this episode. Is that Thiener? I didn't see. No, it's the two random people at this coffee shop. Oh, Jans, dude. You thought okay. I was in a hallway? I don't <laughs> know the coffee where shop. You are. Yeah. <laughs> me neither, like dude. In the back of some. Roll Bill oh, Murray. That's where I'm at. Roll it. Uh, <laughs> keep him there. Dude, uh, do you watch. You don't watch uh, Chris D'Elia's oh. podcast yet, do you? No. I want to. Weird audio. There's, there's this dude, I forget who he is. Ah, uh, Guillermo. He has like a meme, a running meme, or it's just this one guy. It's not like, it's like some Jason, Jason Statham guy. Actually, he played like the new Jason Bourne, I think, or one of the new guys. Um, I forget, but it's just for some reason this dude is funny, and that's just the meme. So anytime he says something dope, he's just like, boom, and like he comes across the screen with music, and like, boom. Ah, fuck, I don't, I haven't watched him long enough, so I don't remember what it's like. <laughs> But it's like we need that meme and a little uh, board for soundboard like Bill Murray. Uh, we need the soundboard. Actually, we'll roll the B-roll. <laughs> That'll save my stupid fucking joke. And then drink another fucking coffee. Um, hey, I don't know who put out the me, episode today. Angel, Loxer, or Pam? Fire. B-roll was banging. TikTok University. B-roll was fire. banging. Oh. Here's the point, though. TikTok University. You would think, transition right back, you know, I won't let you dissect me. Uh, what? So, TikTok <laughs> University. Why doesn't New York Times have a fucking TikTok? I looked it up. It don't exist. They own these little brands that they have, like, their sub-TikToks, but why isn't there, like, New York Times? We're going to drop, I don't know, maybe 20 awesome pieces every day. I don't really know what they do. But let's have 20 awesome TikToks a day. Or just take the top 10 out of those 20, turn those into TikToks. Those should be up all the time. But Washington they're the Post has old one. uncle. Right. I, it might be good. I'm not sure. But point is, the largest media giants in this space should be the first to adapt. And they're the last. Mm-hmm. So like, okay, this is the opportunity. We're, this is like our niche. This is one of those APIs. You guys focus on the raw content. Do the heavy lifting. And then once you have the story, you did all the research, you did uh, piecing it together into like this nice story brand, let's just translate that into like a 30 second clip, 60 second clip. You've done all the hard work. And then just API into clipped 
And it's the easiest thing in the world. You just spit out daily amazing. You could do five to ten uh, just starting out clips a day on your TikTok. And then the best of those you can post on Twitter. And when I say TikTok, I mean like out of a YouTube shorts channel because the same goes on there and same with Instagram. Like those are the spam channels and you can see what goes viral. Then take the viral stuff or just what you intuitively think is the best and put that on Twitter, which is less spammy. Huh. Or in their email newsletter. Or Well... Well, here's what they yeah, I don't got. Know. It could be, yeah. They have a handful. How many was it? It was like six. Eight? Well, I'll just six? say six. They have one, their main morning brew daily email. That's like, focus on that. That's the priority. That's what's grown them. But then they have like these little sub niche newsletters. So say another five of those. And on average, they're posting about three times a week with each newsletter. So that means 18 emails go out a week. Each has maybe like five stories. So let's say we just took the top three of those five stories. It's like, y'all already told the story. Just literally speak to a camera and we'll make it beautiful. Now we're working with 50 clips a week. What does that translate to a day? Seven clips a day. That's just like, fucking taking exactly what you have now, just taking the best stories already told, putting them in video. We do all the heavy lifting. You just upload and, and throw like a, a title on it. And boom, you have seven a day like that out of nothing. And that's not even growing what you're already doing. I like it, Pop. Should we talk about the economics of that? Yeah, so this is what I'm thinking. Well, I don't know. Did you have a plan? Because I, I said like, yo. No, that's the, that's the prompt I missed. I didn't bring a plan, but... Um, I latched onto just this philosophy. The water. Uh, just the water, yeah. dude. I just walk around town all day looking for Wi-Fi. You should see me. I just got my backpack, a suitcase, just looking for water. So those are their newsletters. Then Alex also has his Founders Journal podcast, and there's some other podcast they do. I forget dude, what it is. So One much. or two others. But, um, I mean, newsletters alone, say we're doing 50 clips a week. Let's just keep it at that. Multiply that by four. Assume there are four weeks in a month. I have my little pet peeve about that, but say it's four, just to round numbers. Uh, that means 200 clips a month. So what does that translate to? Well, a normal editor can do three clips a week. So, oh, they'd actually have to be 24 hour turnarounds. Interesting. Right, I was just multiplying 200 by that 495 on demand price. Oh, well, they'll be fine but that. It'd be at costs, pretty much. Well, point being, hey, this is the public math thing, but call it yeah. uh, one I'm editor. I'm in a tab doing math. Basically, having 200 clips a month, if an average editor can do, say, 10, then you have 20 editors. You have a team of 20 editors. What does an editor cost a year? They cost about 25000 25. That's that's our cost. So boom. And you have 10 20 or 20 25,000. 20. Just as is at cost would be half a million dollars to build a, a fucking incredible newsletter to now media brand company. Like they are hands That's off. not that much. I know. That's pretty that's what good. I'm saying. Yeah, that's pretty good. I wanted to get 5 million. I don't know. Round up. <laughs> well, here. <laughs> Let's take 90% margins on this thing. Uh, point, point being with this. Uh, well, that's, that's no, 20 editors. The, we the have point 20 is, I don't available char- editors effectively the right now. The point is, I don't want to charge more. It's like, we can pitch that as a no-brainer. Like... I don't even want to know what they spend on marketing per year, but their budget's probably five or 10 million bucks. And we can transform their business for half a million, potentially. Right. So I'm like, yo, you guys don't have to worry about video. Like, we'll we'll do the video. Henry and I will even be like that first month. We'll be pretty hands-on to make sure it's it's The only problem saying, like, they don't have to worry about video, yes, but shooting the video is the hardest part. That's the concern. Getting people to shoot. But here's the thing that I'm thinking. Well, one, you have the writers, and who knows if they're actually good on camera. But if you're writing, like the average person is putting out three, 
well, I don't know how many people work on a particular newsletter, but if they have three a week and each has three stories, so call it like 10. I don't, I don't know. I feel like the story's already written. Like you're, if you're a good copywriter, you're probably good at story in general. So it's just like get a decent setup. Yeah, but we just have screen. to think about, so one of our biggest problems, right, is this idea of the blitz or when people get in over their head, they didn't actually sign up for this extra job we're giving them. So it's like, think the writers are already slammed. They're well, here's already the pushing deadlines to get stuff out. Now we're going to add another job onto their plate. The alternative is he hires two people that I'm are just thinking. dope personalities. That's what I'm it's thinking. Like, From the TikTok marketplace or whatever. Right. You, you just need to hire a Cleo Abram times three or whatever. Well, I mean, it could even be fucking Alex. And he, how many are they doing a week? 50 a week? Yeah, if, if he wants to batch them. I mean, he could do... He could do five to ten of them. Uh, the tricky part, but put when yourself everything in the later tight shoes. turnarounds. Oh, he kind of he needs us. That's the beauty of this: is if you have a daily newsletter, especially which is their their most important one, and they should probably be doing three clips a day just on their daily newsletter. Is there's no other way to do video for it unless it's going to be late news, and once you're late, you're, you're never going to catch up. So he yeah. literally needs us. That's why they were so excited. They're like, we got to buy these guys because they specialize in daily news. Granted, they want to branch into other more evergreen content as well. But that's the like, okay, first stage, let's just maximize what we're currently doing. That's half a million dollars. Then who knows? We'll see how that goes a year from now. Maybe it's the $1 million. Two years, it's the $5 million version. Just grow What's with them. What's a 14-year-old on TikTok cost? On the marketplace. Is there child labor laws or? Because you only got to be 13. Well, you don't. You, you want someone who's in their mid to late 20s. <laughs> yeah. That's so right. That so to his point. With the audience. Right. You want. You, you want his, Alex Lieberman. Yeah. Right. Or whatever their average age is. Like it's he's saying. Content same. Delivery is different. It is probably Alex Lieberman. He's just I'll, like a 30 year old. Later. Dude. But, uh, yeah, no, he's a great storyteller. That's what I, I like about this is he could hire for this role because he already gets it, right? We, we struggled with the hustle doing this, and we wanted them to because they're just fucking boring people, and they don't get it. Sam doesn't get video. Alex was a natural right out of the gate. So we're like, you clearly get it. Let's take what you have, this magic in a bottle, and scale it infinitely. Again, we're the API. You, it would be hard for you to do this, because you don't want to scale a media company within your already existing company. Like this is a, a branch you just tap into. You specialize just creating the best stories. We help you tell them. But you don't, you don't want to be Spotify or not Spotify, Shopify that now has to build a payments platform. You just tap in a Stripe. Like, don't worry, tap into Clipped. And we just create the Clips. That's really smart. You grow like crazy. I'm with it, Pop. Hey, what's really he going to say back? We tell him, here's the plan for your existing content. Never mind the crazy growth ideas we have. Uh, so oh, that's, yeah. You need seven clips a day for each newsletter and a podcast. Uh, like, I guess, well, we, we won't even say this in the first message. First message is get him on board. Like, do you, are you in agreement with a vision like this would he have pushback on the vision i guess it's just that production thing you said it's like okay how do we produce this and then problem solved is you get how to tell a good story hired right our our api our api for post-production is there the api for production is not it almost is like you said they've got all the writers they've got all the stories but it's like what what api are they going to plug in to to shoot these with no friction that's every time we failed it's because there's production friction right and that's where i'm like yo let's work together because this is exciting to us like we want to see this fucking go to the moon and you guys have amazing stories every single day uh let's just figure out how to get two people that can tell a good story one person that can just if one person full-time if they just have to tell 50 stories a week 
that are already written for them, that's a one person job, right? That's 10, that's 10 videos a day. That's a one person job, dude. 10 a day takes three minutes. Well, with setup and whatnot, call it 10 minutes of video. Takes you a hundred minutes. Is that how that works? That's two, dude, that's two a to four hours. job. Alex could do it. Two to four hours, yeah. So then after that, it's okay. Yeah, let's fucking do it. That assuming, I don't know if you think of any other pushback you'd have. Then it's okay. What does this cost? Well, this is going to cost us half a million dollars to do. But yeah, would you do it at cost? Dude, if there was half a million dollars in our bank account right now, gladly. Also, keep yeah, in mind. Right. If he wanted to do this the monthly way, it'd probably cost him like 700000 Meaning, Grant, we probably wouldn't be as hands-on and uh, as excited, but if he just wanted to hire through clips, it wouldn't be that, that much more expensive. Like 30% more. Oh, yeah. So, you know, we say, look, you need, call it 20 editors. You can just hire a monthly through Clipped. It's three grand, a m 60 grand a month, right? Yeah. Something like that. You can just do that. That's 720. Or we'll do it at cost for the year or something, right? All up front. Both are a good deal. Right. The thing about up front is I feel like I would, we would be more invested versus he's just another one of our customers. It's like, okay. True. Here, you can hire through the we platform. We do everything gonna... monthly, though. If you talk about, like, scratch your own itch, we always want that flexibility. I think, too, it immediately solves the problem we talked about in the last podcast episode where you're like, well, if we charge monthly and we pay contractors weekly, it solves our cash flow problems. So if he has 20 editors on monthly, I think that solves yeah, all I our guess, problems. I guess it doesn't matter all that much because 60K a month is... A good amount like that should solve cash flow problems regardless it would be nice it kind of gets they're back not gonna to do the, it for a month right once they're in it it's so, probably hard to get out oh it's so hard to unwind if because i were him there's no other way to edit video once you work with us there's just not that is what i do because that you can you don't have to jump into it with 20 people and try and fucking build this out of nowhere you can kind of like ease into it so if I were him, that's probably what I'd prefer. And then maybe by month, like two or three, you're like, okay, can I do the year deal now? Because we got the team locked in place. Uh, keep in mind, though. Branding's there. The, the daily email, if that's on the weekends too, he wouldn't get that under clipped normal because he's asking for weekends. He'd have to submit those as like actual clipped one-offs. Yeah. I think we push for the monthly. That's kind of interesting. Yeah. Spook him. You'd spook him with a half a million. Yeah. Uh, That's crazy, though. Let's, so think about this. If he were to hire 20 Americans and pay him 50 grand a year to do this. It's even more. To get that kind of skill, million. it's probably 75. It's probably three times more, 1.5. Yeah. It's just that many cost. times more expensive if they were to try and do it in-house, let alone finding good, motivated passionate people that can well, start tomorrow this this gets into like my dad so keeps saying he's like why wouldn't people just poach your 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 editors and one it's a good point because they could save 30 percent or whatever it is by just poaching them but now the nice thing about hiring through clipped is say say something happens with an editor oh this is our specialty we'll just sub them out like if one editor i don't know quits for some reason now, you, how is he going to find a backup? He can't find that replacement, and now a newsletter is going to be late. Versus we can immediately sub someone in who's already trained in exactly what you're doing because that's our specialty. Yeah, I think. If, this is like for any startup. If they could, they would have already. Right. Right. Okay. Uh, so we just got to figure out how to craft this message. I guess we can text it out after this. But I think... Yeah, let's go. I think the monthly thing... Uh, it's just a matter of like... If I were him, I'd say let's just start with Morning Brew. That's the most important one. 
and it has to get out daily. Let's see what we can do with that. Have your face on it. And then after this, this is our plan. Let's hit every single newsletter plus Founders Journal plus any other podcast. And then from there, we can, if it's working, we can grow into other newsletters, other avenues, other evergreen content that can just go viral on yep. TikTok and such. That's and it. with that, we launch, Pop. We launch in, we come back with answers next time. Yeah. That's how we do. All right. That's all I got. Garden. <laughs>